everybody, welcome back to another episode of Side DFS Fantasy Baseball Picks. I'm Mr. Megaro31. Apologize for the late video today in my area. There are a lot of storms, um, like devastating uh, storms took out roads and stuff and power and, and internet. And as I fix things, my internet keeps on going on and off. But I think we're to the point now where it's been on for a while. So I'll try to record this and upload it and get it out to you this afternoon so you can at least watch it for tonight's slate. And thanks for still watching. Even though it's football season, it seems like everybody's gravitated towards that. We still have some money to be made in baseball. So let's get to it. Uh, speaking of weather, we've got some weather issues tonight. So we'll get into them as we go through the breakdown. First game, Texas Rangers, Toronto Blue Jays, uh, Dunning and Bassett. Dunning not interested in even though the Toronto lineup's a little bit um, watered down. With uh, some injuries, belts out, uh, Bichette's been in and out of it, uh, Jensen's been out of it, uh, Chapman is getting close but not back in it yet, even though like Schneider has um, risen to the occasion and Biggio's filled in and been okay, it, it just isn't as potent at it as, as it could be, but still, I don't like them dunning against them. Bass on the other side, much better pitcher at home, uh, Texas. You know, definitely uh, he's good against righties, but you have some lefties here like Seager and Lowe and uh, Tavares should move up and switch it. Garver's just been on a tear also, Heim. So there's some uh, bats definitely in this stack that you could look at against him. Toronto bats, uh, I think, again, whatever stack you want to play. I have him as one of the top stacks, but I will just have to – see you know how the lineup comes out like and i like biggio there is like some cheap um to help there so probably the normal one springer brissette vlad schneider biggio and then if you want to mix it up at all um that's what you got okay first rain game fenway yankees and red Sox. uh battle for last place in the al east who would have thought uh some sad not sad news but some Unfortunate news coming out of the Yankees camp. The uh, Martian, Jason Dominguez, the one that we've been loving and has come up and, you know, he flew through double A ball and through triple A ball a couple weeks and came up and has been hitting home runs, might have torn his UCL and uh, is potentially he's going to be shut down for the rest of the season and might miss a lot of 24 season. So <sighs> that's a very... Yeah, I was a Yankees fan, but just overall, just as a fan of baseball and a young prospect, I don't even care if he was on the Red Sox. I mean, that's just sad to see somebody come up and make such a great impact. I mean, imagine if, like, De La Cruz only got, like, five or six games and then had a season-ending injury. You'd be like, we all would have been like, wow, that's just – for any 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 athlete, you don't want that. So, uh, best of luck to him. Hope he gets uh, healed up. But in this matchup, we have Schmidt and Cutter Crawford. About sixty percent chance of rain here, so I don't know. This is, I think, this is a, a dangerous game. I, I put the bats on the hundred fifty max, and the pitchers. I don't think I'm going to touch either, just because it looks like the rain's going to be on and off. The wind's blowing in too, so it's not great hitting conditions. But Crawford's been good against righties, and that's pretty much what the Yankees lineup is. So I'm not super interested there. But I do think the lefty is against Schmidt if this game does look like it's going to play. So Verdugo, Devers, I love, um, you know, definitely someone that can take him deep one or two times. Cassis, uh, if he's up in the fourth spot there, Yoshida. And then, you know, Turner, if you want to mix him in or if you just want to go three, uh, I think that's – um definitely again you'll just have to check the weather for that one and make sure it's okay next weather game in new york city with the mets here um the zach davies uh, arizona and the mets zach davies and quintana davies bad pitcher not interested quintana has been not bad recently so i think in the cheap range you can consider him if the weather's going to be okay it looks like the weather's going to end here earlier so it might be a late start so and uninterrupted after that it only looks like 10 percent after like a certain period of time so they might be okay there so keep Quintana in mind for somebody cheap uh arizona if you're looking for a really cheap bat on both sites jordan lauer uh i think he got hit by a pitch was off yesterday but he was available to pinch hit and the um manager says he's fine so definitely gets a lefty here you got some righty power he should hit second so you know christian walker we definitely love fam Marte, if he's back in the lineup he was dealing with a little bit of a knee issue but he should be okay uh, guriel uh, longoria is usually cheap at third base so there's a lot of nice uh, cheap pieces here for Arizona against Quintana if the weather looks okay here. And then the Mets, like the lefty, 
power, even the righties against him too. He's been a little reverse split see. So Nemo, Lindor, McNeil, Alonso. You have to pick between Alonso and Vogelbach. Uh, Alonso is expensive, but I think he's got a more home run upside. Vogelbach is uh, only 2.8, so if you need some savings there, DJ Stewart should be back in line too. So there's a lot of decent um, Mets, even though I'm in the 150 match just because of the weather. I, I think that they're definitely in play also for a stack if you're going deeper in GBPs tonight. Tampa Bay and Minnesota, Glasnow and Sunny Gray. There could be some rain in the middle of this game also. So I think Glasson is probably a top pitcher on the slate, but I'm a little hesitant on that just with the rain news. So just keep that in mind. Sonny Gray, I think, is in a decent spot also. But you have Glasson, who's been going six or seven strong innings, uh, has strikeout upside against a high K lineup. Uh, just it's a beautiful matchup. If the so keep an eye on the weather there. It's a pitching park. The wind's blowing in. I mean, everything says that Glasnow's top play on the slate. If you can fit him in your lineup and if it definitely would get the clear for the weather there. Uh, Gray on the other side, it's been inconsistent. So has Tampa Bay offensively. Like they started out like the Atlanta Braves. We thought they were the team this year. And then they've had some injuries and, um, you know, the Wander Franco thing. And so they're not as strong, but they've been okay. Like Predis is banged up a little bit and, but it's still a decent offense and they're still fighting for the playoffs. So I, I think they're still in play here. So I, I think they're a good leverage stack against gray. I don't think they'll have high ownership on the slate. I think people will gravitate towards these high total games and they only have like a 3.89 total here with the potential weather, the wind blowing in the par factor being 67 degrees. So they could be a sneaky stack here against gray. If gray has a night where he struggles and then Minnesota on their side would just be probably the ultimate leverage stack against probably the top pitcher on the slate. Miami Marlins and Milwaukee Brewers. We have Lazardo and Woodruff. Uh, both of them are at a decent spot here. If you remember early in the season, we said take any left-handed pitcher against Milwaukee that you possibly can. And they've gotten a little bit better, but um, Yelich has been banged up out of the lineup. I like, kind of might lead off here, but they don't super scare me here. I'll probably throw an all light handed lineup against them, but I think Lazardo can shut them down. It's definitely in play in the mid range here at eight, five, where if you want to try to get Coors field and the Cubs who are super expensive, um, almost as expensive as a starting pitcher, some of the players, then you might want to play Lazardo. Woodruff on the other side, I think is in a great spot too. Uh, Solaris out of the lineup. I don't think he'll be back yet. Uh, you know, there are some decent bats in this lineup, but they're not as scary as when they're full strength here. And uh, Woodruff has has been decent um, recently after having some struggles this season. So uh, Milwaukee is definitely in play as a cheap here uh, or a leverage one if Les Ardo is going to have a lot of ownership. And then uh, Miami on the other side, same thing. Uh, the whole total is not high in this game because Woodruff is a good pitcher. But if I was just playing Miami, I stick to the lefties like Larissa and probably Jazz and um, maybe uh, Jesus Sanchez, maybe a three mess. I don't know if I go like a full stack there. Uh, next weather game is in not Wrigley Field. It's in the White Sox Stadium. Uh, what is that? Comerica? Uh, Casey and the White Sox. We just had this pitching. I don't know if we have this pitching matchup, but both these pitchers faced um, off against these teams recently and both got destroyed. So I'm hoping that this weather holds out because and it, it looks like it's optimistic that it is because the wind is blowing out here six miles per hour. So that does help hitting. And I think it's a great way to get some cheap batters in uh, and get a decent pitcher and be able to play some of those expensive Cubs or Dodgers or Astros tonight. Um, this game, it could be a gold mine for that. Or if you want to pay up for both pitchers and like stack both this, this game, then I think that's another great um, way to uh, be able to uh, try to make your lineup different, but have something solid going forward this evening. Cause you got some great pitching matchups tonight. So uh, like bats, I like just throw them in cheap wise, the pitchers I'm not touching. Uh, they've just been very, very scary. So, uh, and I just pick the splits. So, Actually, you could probably pick anybody. You can just look back at the box score and see. Like, I know Velasquez, even though it's righty on righty, had an amazing series against uh, the White Sox last time out. Uh, Prez is um, really cheap on FanDuel. He's not bad on DK. Witt, I'd probably skip. Like, if you're trying to go cheap here, Garcia leading off has a lot of – and Massey. There's Drew Waters down the bottom switch hitter. I mean, there's there's a lot on this KC side. And then, like, Ben Attendi. Roberts is a little expensive here, but like Jimenez, Moncada, the switch hitter, um, you know, you just have to see what works out for your lineup to to plug in there. 
Oakland Athletics, Houston Astros, Mason Miller looks like he's going to be kind of an opener. Maybe it goes a little bit deeper than Waldercheck's rumor to come in after him, not touching that situation at all, even in a free roll um, for a million dollars. Uh, Valdez on the other side is probably um, in a great spot too. And I think actually thinking, rethinking it here, I'm going to put him here. Uh because he's ten, he's he's one k cheaper than Glass now, and if Glass now has like the weather, like it's like the ace, like this guy just had, um, uh, not a perfect game, but a no hitter, and you know he he's been really good, and the ace, he even though they're better against left handed pitching, like he could have a complete game shutout, like they let him go the distance. This guy has great stuff. He's the ace pitcher on the slate. And I know why take a chance this late in the season, but they're still battling with like Texas and 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 Seattle for that division and in, in the playoff race. So, you know, if he goes out there and has a solid start, it saves the bullpen and, and stuff for the, the rest of the series. Not that they might need it against the A's, but anyways, there's a lot of positive things for Valdez also here. So obviously Oakland makes another great leverage stack here. Juloff might lead off Rooker. Um, I don't know why they wouldn't lead off like Ruiz. He just has like so much speed and stuff. You think he'd be the table setter up there against a lefty, but I don't know. Uh, maybe it's inconsistency. Like ever since the injury, he just hasn't been as explosive, but you know, maybe they give him a chance to heal. So A's don't really scare me, but there are some pieces that you can take in a leverage stack if you want to against Veldez. And then Astros have to be like probably the third favorite stack on the slate here. Uh, some cheap guys too. Cheaper guys, like if you want to go, I think, you know, stack the bottom of the lineup here and go like start with Brantley and go like seven, eight, nine, one, two, and then like leave Alvarez and Bregman and Tucker on the shelf or go like five, seven, eight, nine, one or something like that. Just be different. It's it's hard to kind of get them all in here and get up and pay up for some decent pitchers. And I want to try to probably get two decent pitchers if I'm playing Houston. So uh, that's the way I'm probably going to attack that. Oop, wrong mouse click. Okay, Coors Field, 11 total. Cubs have a 6 total, and uh, Rockies have a 4.8. We have Jordan Wicks and Kyle Freeman. Jordan Wicks is 3-0. and I know it's Coors, but we've seen pitchers go in and do really well at Coors Field against this Colorado team that isn't that great. So I think Wicks is – I have him in the no interest one, but I think he's definitely – you know what, actually, I – this is why you watch the video and just don't – look at who's on the page and and fast forward and because you know there's sometimes we have some things that um as you rethink about the slate make more sense so i'm gonna move him over here i'll take a shot at this he's probably the only one that doesn't have rain in the cheap range his 7k uh i i think i i really like him when i, I started to make the builds you know my first thought was put him on the no interest risk on um, list but um and I know I spelled Detmers wrong. If you watch the football video, um, I tried, but I misspelled names. I um, called Justin Field Joe Field because Syracuse had a quarterback um, in college named Joe Field for like years. So it was ingrained in my head. And, um, you know, I kind of forgot that uh, the Chargers are now in Los Angeles, not San Diego, but like, you know, with all those West Coast teams move around who can keep track. Anyways, back to baseball. So Wicks, yes. Freeland, no. Uh, Cubs, so many ways to stack them. Even Bellinger, lefty and lefty, even though he's almost like 7K, he's at 6'8". Uh, you know, he's $200 less than the starting pitcher in the game. I think he's he's in play because he he can do it. So Gomes is a, a great, you know, if you want to get cheaper in the stack, a, a catcher, Madrill, even though he bats lower third. This is another one where go lower in the lineup and go Gomes, Madrill, Morrell, like corner Suzuki and you know make that your stack instead of going like one through five or one through six or something like that it'll make you different it gives you more money and, and it works out so I think the Cubs might be a GPP stack just with it's gonna be cooler in cores and just with how expensive they are and but you know definitely a top stack on slate Colorado on the other side against the young if you want to take some of these righties like Tovar has been good all season uh diaz the catcher um the other catcher like hunter goodman dh guy first base uh he's been really solid montero even if he's in there is really cheap at three three uh opens some things up so they're definitely in play also 
Angels and Mariners, the Angels don't even have a three total. They have a 2.96 total. And we don't know if Tiny's going to be back. I think you should just shut him down for the rest of the year. I know we think he's trying to be healthy enough to go out there and try to get to like the 50 home run plateau. I, I think that's um something that's really important to him or, you know, and, and I think it's just in his DNA that he just wants to play if he can, you know? Um, so we'll see how that plays out, but Reed Detmers, he started out the season good and he's just declined, 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 declined. So I don't know if it's just that they know they're out of the playoffs and there's really nothing to compete for anymore. And they're just going and playing out the rest of the season or, or what's going on there. Um, Logan Gilbert on the other side, I think is in a really great matchup here. And if you don't play up for glass, no, just be one. I think he's definitely in consideration here. Even if Otani plays, they can just pitch around him. But the rest of this team is like misfit Colorado people and cast off and, and young guys. And, you know, at times like some of, like Pittsburgh and Washington and some of the other teams we've seen, they have flashes of brilliance, but I, I think Logan Gilbert should be solid here. Seattle lost some ground over the weekend and play well. And I think this is a great um, going back home, getting get right spot for them. And uh, definitely against the lefty, I love the righties here. So uh, J Rod, uh, Tenasco Hernandez, um, you know, is definitely in a great smash spots. Hernandez or Suarez here, Raleigh, even going down like Dylan Moore is cheap uh, at two five. Uh, Caballero, if he's in there, Sam Haggerty, if you want to do a wraparound stack, can do first base or or um, outfield. He's only 2.3k, um, and, and he's uh, been pretty solid recently too so lots of great ones there angels I, I just really don't um like them i think they'd be a leverage stack against gilbert if anything but i don't really have much hope for them here seattle is my favorite gpp stack but i might flip them with toronto and put like toronto as the or seattle as the third or fourth favorite stack there and then put toronto as the top gpp so uh toronto is a little bit higher of a total i believe toronto's total is 477 and but I think that Seattle, it might just be like the inconsistency we saw over the weekend that has their total a little bit low, but I, th I think they'll do fine. Cleveland Guardians and San Francisco Giants, Gavin Williams and Alex Cobb. I like Williams here because Giants have some K upside. Williams has been solid. He's only 8K, and it's um, a decent pitcher park, decent matchup. He also throw 100,000 lefties at him, but some of their lefties are still injured. Um, like Conforto still out of the lineup, so... We'll just have to see if you can get around like Peterson and maybe your Stromsky. The rest of them, I think he's fine. Again, I think there's some K upside. Cobb on the other side, he's dealing with like a, uh, an injury. And who knows what like the Giants are going to do. Does he go like out there and then they like bring somebody else in? So I just don't trust any Giant pitchers. So uh, I know I have him in the medium one, but he might be over in the more of the no interest category for me. Uh, Bat-wise, Cleveland, they just don't do anything. Uh, they, they just they really can't put up runs or they just aren't super excited for me. So I think, um, I don't have them on the board here, but they would go over here in the 150 max, even though there's no weather in the game. I just, they, they just don't do much. Uh, San Francisco on the other side, I think I have them as a top sheet stacking against Williams, but I think, you know, I just, I'd rather I think I take Milwaukee here. Let's let's move them up. And if the weather's better, like this Kansas City and um and uh White Sox are, are definitely better uh matches there for you. Uh San Diego Padres and Los Angeles Dodgers finders game on slate. Uh, Pedro Avilla coming from the bullpen, starting to get stretched out, uh, filling in for starters here. And then Gavin Stone gets called back up. They're trying to push some of their regular starters a little bit more, give Kershaw and some of the other guys a little bit more rest. Uh in in the rotation, since they lost Walker Brewer and they lost May and they lost some of the other guys, they're just trying to uh give these starting pitchers as much rest going into the playoffs as possible. So uh, really not on a via. He's a fade, and same thing with Stone not playing a pitcher. Good for offense here, but watch it because I saw a report that Manny Machado might have like an elbow injury and might have to go get uh, surgery in the off season for that. And like he's been held out the last couple of days, hasn't officially gone on the IL, but just keeping uh, a watch on for that. Uh, so I think San Diego is in, in play for GPP and the Dodgers, I think are a great play here as a late night hammer. They have a 5.65 total here. 
So anyone you want, Freeman, Spets, Smith, Muncy, uh, JD, if he's in the lineup, Peralta, Hayward, Altman, and maybe not Roas, but, you know, any way you want to stack them. At least they have some of these, like, utility outfielders that are only, like, 3K that you can fit in with the studs to, to make your lineup decent. So let's look at some builds to get you on your way for your Monday. So as I said, I'm going up top here. I'm going Gilbert. I'm going Valdez. If you want glass, no, can make it work. That's fine. But I think these two are solid. And give me Altuve, Brantley, and Dubon. I'll build from there. If you want to go cheaper at pitcher and can get um, Alvarez or Tucker in, that's fine. Or Bregman, I might go Maldonado's catcher because he's pretty cheap. Fits the stack is kind of a wraparound there. And then Lawler, the 2-2 guy. And then I might probably fill in with a couple of the Seattle pieces. Like I said, they're pretty cheap and have a pretty high, high total. Um there or you know i don't think i'm gonna maybe the walkie guys you know i'll see like kind of leading off i think he's first base eligible also and uh you know i'll, I'll see what fits for that fan duel uh gilbert's here um uh, prez uh, I'm, I'm give me the kansas city guys if the game rains out I'll, I'll go another direction there probably milwaukee but perez altuve velasquez tucker brantley and then you can figure out what the fourth piece you want or if you want to don't go on go brantley and want to go other ones that's fine but tucker altuve is pretty much where um i'm looking there so many ways to go with houston uh for gpp we have uh, williams here michael williams wick just to try to get a full cubs um stack in there but if you're not, then you have like Lizardo, who's in um, in a good spot also. And, you know, maybe Gray, I wouldn't go like Cease is, is up there, but with the rain and, and everything, I, I just don't know. But Gomes, a catcher, I like. Hegarty at, um, is really cheap for first base. Morale, uh, to Hernandez. So, you know, I'm going with Seattle here. Suzuki, I really like the Cubs Seattle stack that I was able to build with G. Williams. I think I had Wicks in there as my SP2. Uh, same thing at FanDuel, Wills, Williams is actually cheaper than Wicks. So, you know, if you want to go there, it opens more salary. Um, but if you want the correlation with Wicks, that's okay. You'll just have to play one off, which I was going to probably anyways in here. So uh, my Cubs, I'm taking his Horner, Swanson, and Suzuki. You figure out which fourth one you want there to make your stack work. And then, again, I'm going to Seattle, so give me Hernandez. I could probably, if I, you know, go down to Williams, get J-Rod in there. Maybe probably Suarez is third, and then I'm just probably going to pump my first baseman and figure out who works in there for that. So, so I got for you. If you have any questions, you can put them in the chat below or hit me up at 31 on Twitter slash X. Um, if you want more information on FSI DFS, you can go to our website and you can see all our packages and um, everything for that. Very reasonable for all our sports. And we have VIP package, which covers all of them. And uh, finally, if these videos helped you, you've already helped me by watching it this far into it. And uh, if you want to go a little bit more, like the video, subscribe to our channel so you know when our videos are coming out. Like that, sorry, again, this one was a little late today. And share with your friends. So thanks for watching. Hope you have an amazing Monday. Good luck in your contest. I'll see you next time.